When the Ship Canal opened in 1894, it was opened by Queen Victoria uh, with a great amount of pomp and ceremony and uh, a big procession through the streets of Manchester and Salford. When the procession passed down Dean's Gate in Manchester, it went underneath a ceremonial arch that had been erected by a Manchester Fire Brigade made up of escape ladders and fire engines, uh, soldiers were there with rifles and everybody was lined up and it formed a huge ceremonial arch which the procession passed underneath, which is very, very impressive. When the docks opened at the end of the 19th century and the trade started coming in, um, fire became more of a, of a prominent issue for the, uh, for the dock management and the local fire brigade. And they had serious talks with Manchester Fire Brigade, who was the main instigator, albeit it was in Salford, uh, for the protection of the docks. And lots of things were done. New fireboat was purchased in 1904. It was the most powerful fireboat in the country. Um, new water mains were put in around the docks area, hydrants, uh, fire alarm system and so on and it was all proved to be necessary certainly in the years between 1900 and 1940 there were quite a number of serious ship fires in the 20s and 30s when the uh, dock traffic was at its peak uh, the fire brigades were busy as was the fireboat some very large ship fires between the wars the Second World War was a particularly uh, frantic period I mean it was the docks and Trafford Park is virtually merges into one high-risk area and the Germans were in no doubt about that that's what they were going to attack. Consequently everything was, was ramped up. Temporary fire stations were opened all around the docks, Odd Soul, Old Trafford. Um, what you have to remember is at that time the area was covered by separate fire brigades, the Stretford and Urmston Fire Brigade, Salford City Fire Brigade, Manchester Fire Brigade, Eccles Fire Brigade, all had to share uh, in protecting that, that huge dock estate and before the war that kind of interworking was a little bit more difficult and um, hence the reason why the fire service was nationalised during the war to, to improve the coordination. For, for years the, the, the fire service was quite an unhealthy occupation. Fellows spent the time in thick smoke on the hands and knees and getting wet through and hot and, and the personal protection wasn't the same as it is today. Um, what changed that over sort of 20-30 years ago was the introduction of plastics and foam furniture, more chemicals being transported around and the fire service had to adapt and protect its firefighters much better. It was nothing in the 50s and 60s for a firefighter to retire at 55 and be dead by the time he was 60 with chest complaints. It was perfectly normal. It's a much healthier service today and a lot safer on, on a personal basis. If we go back 50 years and look at a firefighter of the 1940s and 50s compared to today um, everything is very much more basic. The uniform was made of old materials, there was no fireproofing, there was no waterproofing. Breathing apparatus was far more cumbersome and consequently used a lot less. Uh, nowadays it's, everything's a lot more sophisticated. Firemen are protected better. Yeah, breathing apparatus, when it was used, was probably an event. If you wore breathing apparatus once a month, you were doing very well. Nowadays it's virtually used at every fire. It has to be because materials have changed. A typical house fire in the days when I was a young fireman, you, the, the furniture would be made of horse hair or natural materials. The kitchen would have uh, chip pans in it and old fat and stuff like that. And it was just very unpleasant and dirty. But nowadays the smoke in the very same household is seriously poisonous. Cyanide and carbon monoxide and all sorts of fumes due to the development of things like plastics. A typical living room fire um, no fireman would be safe to enter it today. We used to be sent in on our hands and knees to deal with it. Everything's